Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today? I'm awesome, Sauce Nathan. How are you today? I am awesome, Sauce, as well. I'm happy to be back on the mic with you, man. Sweet. So, you know what? Uh, let's just go ahead and jump. I, I, like, sometimes we do a little bit of small talk before, before we do the show, but your topic today looks very intriguing to me, so I just want to jump right into it. Fucking people be making assumptions and it's ruining their lives. <laughs> uh, yes, there's that old saying, never assume anything because you make an ass out of you and me. How does that apply to client getting and, and really just living a good life in general? It's actually twofold. There's two pieces to it. People make assumptions on everything, but they make assumptions on, well, if I do this, that's going to happen. If I say this, that's going to happen. And making those assumptions keeps us stuck from doing things and moving forward, right? Putting ourselves out there, um, initiating a conversation, right? Because assumptions are really because of this thing. Um, our stupid little primate brain doesn't have the ability to really assimilate all of the information that we're gathering all the time. So we've come up with this really creative way of creating stories that we then lead our lives by. The problem is, is most of that information that we've used to create these stories is inaccurate or it's not been, um, it's not been checked or challenged enough to where the assumptions that we've got are actually based on fact. Meaning if I go put my hand on a hot stove, I know for certain that my hand's going to get burnt. But I might think that, well, if I stop and talk to a stranger, bad things happen, and that's my assumption, then it's going to keep me from initiating conversations with people I don't know. And generally, those assumptions are inaccurate. The other way that assumptions kind of screw us up is, especially when we're good at the thing that we do, we've been through that quote unquote process of a sales conversation enough times that we gather just a little bit of data that we think that's all we need from the other person we're talking to. And we begin making assumptions and all of a sudden the conversation goes off the tracks because you think, you know, but you didn't actually find out. And so it's, it's those two pieces. Assumptions has been coming up in my world a lot the last couple of days. Um, I, in fact, it happened to me today in an email from, from somebody um, jumping to conclusions, ready to, ready to jump into the ring and start swinging. And it really could have gone a whole different way for both sides of that interaction um, if that person would not have made the assumptions they made and just took the time to ask a couple of clarifying questions. So that's why this topic, um, we all make assumptions. I do it. But if we're, if we're paying attention to the fact that we make assumptions and not everything we think we know is accurate and we slow down a little bit, it makes for every interaction that we have with people that much easier, which is kind of the point. Mm -hmm. I think also in life, the main cause of all disappointment is usually assumptions. The mm -hmm. main cause of conflict, the main cause of pain is that we're making assumptions. And a lot of times in relationships, your, your girlfriend or your wife or your husband or your boyfriend gets mad because they assumed you knew what they meant by something. Or you go into a situation and you have an assumption of how it's going to turn out. And when it doesn't turn out that way, you get upset. You're very angry. You want to take it out on somebody. And a lot of times in business, especially dealing with clients, if we're not clear with our expectations, if we're assuming things or if we're allowing the other person to make assumptions and we're not actively ensuring that their assumptions are not within our perimeters, it can lead to a lot of strife in a business relationship as well. I often say it like this. Frustration is almost always due to unmet expectation. And what is expectations? their assumptions, right? They're unvalidated assumptions. Um, yeah, it, it's fact, period. 
Okay, so what are some ways that, uh, what are some things that we should think about when trying to, trying to avoid the, the hell that assumptions can bring? First, by observing yourself doing it, right? Um, we don't always know that we're doing it until we catch ourselves doing it and then not kicking our ass when we do catch ourselves doing it, right? And look at it from the standpoint of, oh, right, I live by a certain set of stories that I've created and that's just how I think it is for me and, and all of that. And, and question those. Look at, look at it from the standpoint of, I think I know, but there's a chance that I actually don't. And so once we observe it, then we can question ourselves if we do for a fact know something to be accurate. And simply by, by doing that second piece, a lot of times we'll go, well, maybe I don't, right? And then ask questions, ask clarifying questions of yourself. Okay, so if that might not be true for me, why not? Like what could be different? What could be true for me, right? I'm an introvert. It's not that I'm an introvert. I really just don't like peopling with people all the time, right? But I put that, I put that false um, banner on me, and that causes all the information and assumptions that come with being an introvert now box me in and basically keep me in the prison of quote-unquote being an introvert. When in reality, it's just, you know, I don't like everybody. And I think that if everybody was honest with themselves, everybody would agree that I like some people a lot and I don't like some other people a lot. And that's okay. That doesn't make me an introvert. You know, bringing that up, that makes me also think of the fact that a lot of times our assumptions, there's the one hand where our assumptions blow up in our face and we're proven wrong. But then there's the other hand where our assumptions are self-fulfilling prophecies. I'm an, I'm an introvert. Therefore, I don't go out and network. I don't go, to, uh, I don't go to the networking events. I don't hang out with people. I'm not attractive, so I don't get the good-looking girl. I'm not successful, so I don't get the high-paying clients. There's the, there's the aspect of assumptions in a negative tone can actually be a self-fulfilling prophecy and hold you back from reaching what you should be reaching in life. Yeah. It, it almost like, here's the thing, right? So assumptions, making assumptions is the second fastest way to kill a deal, right? Neediness is the first, but making assumptions and making them wrong and the conversation goes off the track. It's the second fastest way to kill a deal. But in a much larger picture, from your worldview, all of the assumptions that you've made, all of the conclusions that you've come to, whether they're correct or incorrect, are dictating and determining what you get in life and how you get it, right? So if it's hard, if it's a struggle, if, if it never goes right, those are all assumptions and conclusions that you're living by that keep you stuck and keep you boxed in. And almost all the time, those conclusions and assumptions are just not correct. And nobody can change that for you except yourself. And the only way that you can change it is A, observe that you do it, and B, question, is that really actually true? Mm -hmm. And then the last thing, man, every time you say something, I'm like, oh, I remember Landon telling me this. One thing that you, and I apologize if I'm giving away too much of the secret sauce, but one thing that you've told me in a private kind of high level meeting that we had was that one of the biggest things that you do screwing up, you were talking to me specifically, screwing up a sales call is assuming what the other person wants instead of asking, instead of making it about them. I'm saying, oh, I'm so knowledgeable. I know exactly what you, what you need to do is you need to do this kind of ad and we need to do this kind of a campaign. And I've seen that when I've done that, I make the assumption of what they need without listening to what they need. I've screwed up sales calls before doing that. You know, when you go to the doctor and you say, man, my chest hurts. He doesn't go, oh my God, you're having a heart attack and wheel you right into surgery and like crack your chest open and put you, put you to sleep, right? No. <laughs> what do they do? They ask you a shit ton of other questions and they start doing tests and all of those tests, the purpose is to answer questions 
So we know for certain that we should actually go like crack your ribs open. But business owners and salespeople often jump to conclusions. Ah, you came to me. You want to talk to me about X, Y, Z, and I'm the expert in that. So you need this and that and the other. This is the biggest thing with digital digital marketers the last couple of years is they jump right into a conversation with a with a new prospect and oh yeah we're going to use facebook ads to do this and that and the other and the guy or the woman that they're talking to in their mind is going fuck that i've done that nine times with nine other people and they were all idiots and it all sucked and now you're done because you made an assumption right so what we think we know is almost always not accurate, especially when it comes to what we think other people know or don't know. Okay, so we've covered like three or four different ways that assumptions can blow up in your face. And I think we went a little bit deeper than just the tip. <laughs> but um, what are some ways that we, could, that we could, if we're feeling stuck, if we're feeling like assumptions are, are preventing us from doing what we need to do what are, some, what are some questions that we can, can ask ourselves, or what are some things we can ponder in order to get out of that situation? The first is obviously to observe it, right? If you observe yourself doing it and then don't kick your ass for doing it, the next step is asking yourself, what do I know for certain? What do I know for sure? Whether you're talking to your spouse or to your girlfriend or to your kid or to the neighbor or to a prospect, what do I actually know for certain? And usually that list is a whole lot shorter than we think it's going to be, right? And then we ask, why do I know that? And the answers to that question will give us enough insight to say, okay, cool. If it's not actually like that, are there other ways that it could be? And have I challenged that? Have I challenged that idea several times from several different ways, right? Like, let's use that example because there's a lot of people that listen to this podcast that are digital marketers. God help them. <sighs> I probably shouldn't have said that, but we should leave it in because that's how I feel. If you make the assumption that you know for certain somebody needs Facebook ads and you jump right into a conversation with, yep, you need Facebook ads and this is how we're going to do it and this is the funnel that I've gotten, blah, 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 blah. You're going to ruin half at least of the conversations that could have turned into a client right off the bat. If you would instead slow down and say, okay, what do I know for sure? Well, this person does X, Y, Z. Realistically, that should work with Facebook ads. Do I know for certain that they've tried Facebook ads and they have not worked for them? No, I don't know that. Well, right then and there, it'd probably be a good question to ask them. What have you used as far as paid traffic to do this? Not, have you done Facebook ads before? What was the result? It's literally, what have you done paid traffic wise, right? Because not only are you making assumptions when you're talking to your prospects, but they've already concluded a bunch of assumptions before they even got into a conversation with you, right? So we need to unwind those and we need to, we need to basically get the truth on the table about what do I know and what do they actually know? And then how do we go through questioning each other to get to what could work and how it could work if we did this together. Right. And then I think that one thing also is, and this is probably the most difficult thing is ask after you ask yourself, what do I know? And why do I know that actually challenging yourself? A lot of us don't like to, if we've, if we've got a belief and we have a little bit of evidence to back that belief up, we don't want to challenge that. I mean, that, Cognitive dissonance, confirmation bias, those are very hard psychological things to get over, to actually ask yourself, am I sure of this? And look for evidence or, or um, examples that prove you wrong. Yeah, and check this out. If you want something different or you want something more, you have to do something different or you have to do something more. And the only way to figure out what those two things are is by asking questions. It, it really comes down to this, question everything. And that means authority. That means yourself. That means the shit you believe and why you actually believe it. Why other people believe what they, it means, question everything. And if you can question everything from the perspective of, I think I know, 
but I could be wrong. Let's find out and be open to it. It's really easy to come up with different answers that are oftentimes way better answers and way more clear answers. The only way you get there is by questioning. Nice. Okay. So this was, this was a little bit different, but I think that a lot of the stuff that we covered in this is stuff that absolutely need to be heard, needed to be heard. And I know you, you, you let your tongue slip a couple times and I'm definitely not editing those out because I think that as a marketer, I think those are things that I need to be reminded of as well. So thank you for that tough, tough love today, Landon. Yeah. Sometimes it's gotta be rough, huh? <laughs> yeah, just the tip, but sometimes it's got to be rough. All right, Landon, <laughs> until next time, man, where can people go if they want to check out more of this here podcast? We do this a bunch over at the salesgorillapodcast.com, salesgorillapodcast.com. Nice. All right, man, until next time, I will catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts. <laughs>